but there's no need to be alarmed. That plane is part of science in action. The U.S. Geological Survey has begun researching the Spirit Lake, part of a campaign to search for critical mineral. In the high silence of a Rocky Mountain winter, while the world sleeps beneath veils of snow, helicopters prowl low above the hills. Their shadows pass silently over the frozen pines of Wyoming, the striking red buttes of northern Colorado, and the ancient canyons cut deep into the bones of the American West. They drift not with the aimlessness of search and rescue, nor for patrol or spectacle, but on a focused quest to reveal long-held secrets of the land. As February 2025 dawns, a curtain lifts. USGS scientists, working side by side with partners like the Wyoming State Geological Survey, launch flights across a survey footprint so new that science fiction might feel tangible to those catching a glimpse. Electromagnetic sensors swing from the undersides of helicopters, scanning the ground in silent exchange with buried rocks. Beneath their looping flight lines, geology that has eluded definitive understanding for generations stands ready to be mapped, not by dynamite or drill bit, but by invisible pulses in the crisp winter air. Americans view these landscapes for their vastness, their wind-scoured solitude. But for geologists, Wyoming and Colorado are also living archives, holding layer upon layer of tectonic memory, ancient mountain roots, fossil storms, the ghostly imprint of vanished seas. For decades, much of this was little more than suggestion, shadows on a map, lines inferred from sparse outcrops and educated guesswork. Now, in just a few weeks, the Earth MRI Airborne Survey will gather more data than decades of walking, hammering, and transcribing observations ever could. What lies in these approaching data streams? Could the rocks beneath quiet valleys contain keys to unknown resources or answers to risks that have long slept undisturbed? As rotors beat over snow lines and the sensors go live, science faces its oldest and simplest question. What are we about to uncover? Metaphor or monster? Promise or peril? Hidden in the strong, silent heart of the West. The Science of the Invisible, Mapping Earth's Secret Script. Imagine standing at the rim of Red Feather Lakes in Colorado, or gazing down from the escarpments above Wyoming's Firehole Canyon. The wind stirs over sagebrush. The land feels open and infinite, but below the surface, much remains unknown. Enter the new breed of geoscientific reconnaissance, the Airborne Electromagnetic Survey. These helicopters fly low and steady, equipped with technology bearing a striking resemblance to hospital MRI scanners, engineered not for fleeting heartbeats, but for histories measured in millions of years. These airborne sensors emit electromagnetic waves into the Earth, then record returning signals, capturing a language of electrical resistance and conductivity, in which each mineral is a distinctive accent, every concealed fault a momentary silence. This is a technology built for mystery, enabling scientists to see through rock and soil without disturbing the surface. The survey footprint for February 2025, encompassing extensive portions of Wyoming and the northward reaches of Colorado, draws its boundaries with precision. Flight lines cross plains and deserts, skirt rivers, and sweep over remnants of ancient volcanoes all to build a three-dimensional image of geology at unprecedented resolution. Why now and why here? It is no accident. Recent advancements in mapping, including an updated one to 100,000 scale bedrock map for the Firehole Canyon Quadrangle, completed by the WSGS in late 2024, have prepared the ground for nuanced insights Yet even the expert eye cannot match what electromagnetic waves can reveal. Concealed faults, buried basins, and the hidden pockets where oil, gas, or critical minerals might accumulate. The USGS calls this the Earth Mapping Resources Initiative, Earth MRI for short, a fitting name. Each flight strips back another layer of opacity, where the public sees a snow-drifted prairie or herds of antelope new data lays bare, 
a world shaped by ancient fire, massive pressure, and the relentless shifts of the planet. At last, the West's geological code starts to come into focus. Yet, how should we interpret these signals? Is every anomaly a hint of treasure? Or could the most important discoveries prove to be warnings, marks of instability or vulnerability? What sets this technique apart is neutrality. The sensors record the differences without bias or presumption, cataloging contrasts in conductivity and resistance that may point to minerals, water, or even hidden hazards. With each gigabyte streamed to busy labs, the sense grows that we are mapping not just for resources, but for understanding, identifying potential, vulnerability, and opportunity in the places we once thought simple. As the maps sharpen and data accumulates, New patterns emerge, some that no eye, human, or machine has ever noticed before. Faults, quakes, and the unraveling of calm. Beneath the tree lines and exposed summits of Wyoming and Colorado, the earth is never truly at rest. For those drawn to quiet, the February survey might offer some comfort. Here, far from coastal fault zones and active volcanoes, the ground looks tranquil but subtle signs reveal a region with a deep and ongoing geologic story. This is a landscape of pivots and accumulated pressures. Since 1867, over 700 recorded earthquakes of magnitude 2.5 or higher have occurred in this region. While modest compared to seismically active areas like California or Alaska, their very presence underscores that seismic calm is always relative. More than 90 potentially active faults snake through the map terrain, visible only to those with the right tools. These scars are seldom dramatic or catastrophic, yet they remind us of an ever-active subsurface, fractures, and fault lines marking a land that continually adjusts to stresses inherited from ancient events. The Airborne Survey's sophisticated sensors can detect ancient rift zones camouflaged beneath ranch land, scan the roots of mountain belts shattered when North America was young, and highlight conductivity changes where fluid or cooled magma once percolated. Surface geology tells rich stories in stone, but electromagnetic imaging can illuminate where stresses have gathered and where minerals or fluids may still be concentrated. Patterns of disruption, discontinuities, anomalies, mineral concentrations, hint at active geology beneath the serene hills and valleys. For all this, the USGS and its partners are cautious, careful to avoid overstatement. Seismic risk in Wyoming and Colorado rarely dominates national headlines, but history shows disaster sometimes comes to places least expected. The New Madrid earthquakes of the Midwest, themselves long unanticipated, are persistent reminders that no region is completely immune from dramatic geologic change. Ultimately, the Airborne Survey will produce a record of where the West's deep structure remains in motion, revealing where geology's calm is just a pause in cycles older than any memory. For towns built on beds that seem stable, new maps may show long dormant fractures, quiet for now, but never truly gone. Hidden treasure hidden risk, critical minerals, and the resource hunt. There is another dimension to the 2025 Airborne Survey, less about looming threat and more about promise, albeit with its own uncertainties. At the heart of this mission is the search for the raw materials that power modern society. The global transition to new energy sources, from solar panels and wind turbine to electric vehicles and advanced electronics, demands steady supplies of minerals like lithium, rare earth elements, and copper. Wyoming, Colorado, and neighboring Utah stand at an important intersection, both geologically and geopolitically. Some numbers frame the scale. Assessments of the region estimate 473 million barrels of oil and 27 trillion cubic feet of natural gas in total recoverable resources. These figures have long shaped economies and policy, but today, the main prize is not fossil fuel, but critical mineral, essential to everything from smartphones to national defense to a sustainable energy grid. The February helicopter flights are not speculative. They are the product of long planning. The latest ground mapping, including the just-released bedrock map for Firehole Canyon, 
has targeted the survey to areas where mineralization could occur, but direct evidence remains sparse. The airborne sensors are trained to detect subtle signatures, zones of increased conductivity or resistance, signs of graphite, manganese, copper, or even the elusive rare earths. Data now pours in, anomalous readings where nothing is expected, subtle signals that may indicate new mineral deposits. For resource companies, these are sparks of hope, potential sites for future exploration, and perhaps new jobs and prosperity for communities left behind by yesterday's booms. For environmental advocates and many residents, the same data raises concern. Any step toward mining or drilling can bring disruption with risks to water, wildlife, and the rural character of the West. Yet the Earth MRI survey does not promise outcomes, only insight. The value is in clarity, understanding the land well enough to weigh risks and benefits before irrevocable choices are made. The new maps may shepherd drill rigs toward the next significant mineral discovery, or they could warn away entire counties from costly mistakes. For all participants, the fundamental questions remain. Who stands to benefit if vast new resources are revealed by sensors swinging over snowy valleys? Whose water, wildlife, and communities bear the risks of progress. The meaning of discovery will hinge not on the minerals themselves, but on prudence and collective choice in the months and years that follow. Ice, rivers, and fire, geology's ancient dance. Reading today's resource prospects is to leap into the deep past. The histories written beneath Wyoming and Colorado reach as far back as the mountains themselves. Stories of birth, erosion, and transformation on a geologic time scale. The airborne surveys of 2025 are more than prospecting. They help reconstruct the region's ancient history. The new data, layered atop decades of mapping, bring fresh focus to the episodes that form this land. The collision and merging of continents, the outpouring of volcanoes, and the groaning retreat of ice sheets. Firehole Canyon, with its record of exposed igneous rocks and sedimentary sequences, is a palimpsest, each stratum a chapter. The survey flights in February are not just about minerals, but also about ancient volcanic eruptions, paths of rivers that transported gold and silt and left behind resources and geological risks in their wake. The survey region includes the marks of glaciation as well, areas carved by icy tongues that pressed south, stacking boulders, scraping bedrock, and distorting ancient layers. Every sediment Every valley is a product of the dance between fire, ice, and the unyielding dynamics of the crust. The same data that will direct where to explore for minerals or hydrocarbons is likewise useful for understanding faults silent for millennia, the locations where future earthquakes could focus, and the roots of groundwater, a vital resource, sometimes contaminated and sometimes pure often flowing below the reach of any surface trace. In this crossing of past and present, the real value emerges. Each mineral vein, each quiver of the earth, and every fertile soil patch carries the marks of events that cannot be seen directly. The airborne sensors capture the record in real time, adding verse to a poem of land and change that has no end. The more we understand this deep history, the more wisely we can act as stewards not just seeking resource and profit, but recognizing responsibilities born from what sleeps and stirs beneath our feet. The burden of knowledge, safety, infrastructure, and unintended consequences. If there is a common thread running through every new survey, it is this. Unearthing the Earth's secrets does not guarantee safety or certainty, only the means to diagnose and address risk more honestly. As data flows from February's airborne campaign into USGS servers, community leaders, and state officials weigh the findings. Surges of opportunity, a new mineral resource, a possible oil field, arrive alongside old concerns. Already, this year's survey data features in conversations about zoning, insurance, and where to build for future resilience. The documentation of more than 90 potentially active faults and hundreds of moderate quakes since the 1800s gives each new scan an air of urgency. Yet the threat here is not of sudden apocalypse, no looming supervolcano, no imminent rift, 
It is quieter, built of cumulative effects, the slow, shifting risk that today's planning might not keep pace with tomorrow's reality. The hard lessons have already been learned downstream of levee failures, and in cities confronted by abrupt water crises, Earth MRI's surveys offer what previous generations lacked, foresight, a chance to adjust course before disaster, not after. The choice between an inconvenient early intervention and a regional crisis may rest on reading data first gathered by a helicopter passing overhead while most people look on, unaware. Will we heed the story coded in colors and numbers, applying, adapting, and preparing? Or will the inertia of habit let scientific warning turn into the next tragedy foretold too late? From promise to policy, a new age of vigilance. The collaboration at the heart of the project, the USGS, Wyoming State Geological Survey, and partners goes beyond technology. Transparency is a defining value. Where once such surveys might have been classified or reserved for industry, the new data flows quickly to the public. Maps, fault line, resource indicators all placed online, opening their meanings to scrutiny and debate. Communities long shut out of the great resource discussions now find themselves in the middle of them. Farmers, teachers, ranchers, engineers, all have roles to play. What flows from the new findings touches school funding, restoration efforts, community planning, and even the fate of entire towns. Institutions, too, are changed. Offices for disaster preparedness and risk management adjust their threat models, making space for hazards newly recognized in airborne data or rare but still possible earthquakes and disruptions to groundwater. Is uncovering so much a blessing or a burden or both? Will it build a more resilient West or simply enable more efficient exploitation and quicker abandonment where resources run dry? The answers, as always, will depend on us. Unanswered questions, unfinished stories. Scientific frontiers always leave mysteries in their wake. The stories beneath Wyoming and Colorado have been handed down through many generations, shaped by settlers, miners, and the deep traditions of indigenous knowledge. But never has so much old earth been revised so rapidly and so publicly as in this moment of airborne geophysics. For everyone, each answer spawns new questions. Even Earth MRI, as powerful as it is, cannot answer all doubts. No scan or map can pinpoint when the next subsurface shift or controversy might emerge. The maps themselves are snapshots, partial views of a shifting Earth. Yet in this uncertainty lies the process's greatest value. For the first time, the secrets locked below the Rockies and High Plains are shared and examined by more people than ever before, and with a clarity that brings both opportunity and warning. In the end, the quiet before. As February closes, the helicopters are grounded, the sensors packed away, and the data begins its journey from high mountain air to the digital halls of science and policy. The snow melts in Firehole Canyon, the Platte River flows on, and school children cross rocky outcrops, potentially never seeing them quite the same way again. What comes next? Will we, as a people, heed the evidence, updating and preparing? Will we rush to act or be careful in balancing use and preservation? Will the age of airborne data lead to a more grounded wisdom, one where every bridge, hospital, or community plan is informed by what lies beneath? For now, all remains possible. The code is cracked only in part, and its meaning will be shaped by what we do next. The helicopters will rise again, and each sweep of scientific curiosity will bring new revelations that no single instrument, not even the most advanced, can fully interpret alone. To follow each new finding beneath the West, the treasures, the cautions, the open riddles, stay curious, ask questions, and watch as the next chapter in the land story begins. From the stillness of the Rockies to the data echoing across the country, the story beneath us is far from finished. The next page waits, even now, beneath our feet.